So I've been in this industry for 40 plus years, and it feels like sometimes the industry has aged with me. In fact, one of the reasons I started this podcast was to help attract and educate people to this industry. And today we're talking to just one of those people. Don't hang up that phone. We found what you're looking for. Welcome to the Let's Talk Cabling Podcast with Chuck Bowser, RCDD. Well, seeing how we're pulling Category 6A, the most powerful twisted pair in the world. You gotta ask yourself this one question. Did I pull 295 or 300 feet? Well, do you feel lucky? Do you punk? In this podcast, you'll learn the differences between a 66 and 110 punch tool, the proper way to install a support cable, along with testing and certifying the cable. What exactly does RCDD stand for? Registered Communications Distribution Designer. Just the expert you need to ensure your cable plant performs exactly as designed. The elite professional, knowledgeable, and experienced in leading edge ICT design principles. So join us as we talk about the ever-changing world of telecommunications. From ISP to OSP, from copper to fiber, design to installation. Now, send the new guy to the truck for a bucket of dial tone and the cable stretchers while you listen to an informative program on telecommunications. Welcome to the show where we tackle the tough questions that are submitted by everybody, including installers, project managers, estimators, even IT personnel. We are connecting at the human level so that we can connect the world. If you're watching this on YouTube, would you mind hitting that subscribe button and then also hit that bell button to be notified when new shows are published. If you're listening to this on, on, uh, on Apple or Google Play or one of the podcast platforms, would you mind please leaving us a five-star rating? And if I don't get a five-star rating, shoot me an email, tell me what I need to do better to get this up to a five-star rating. Those couple little steps helps us beat that nasty algorithm so that we can get this message out to more people in our industry. Also, don't forget our after hours live sessions, which are broadcast live on LinkedIn and YouTube Thursday nights at 6 p.m., where you get to submit your questions to your favorite RCDD. Well, that would be me. And then you can watch it answered on live. If you miss it, the live version, they are recorded so you can consume them later. You can get to them easily by going to our webpage. Make sure to submit your questions in advance to questions at letstalkcabling.com. We actually will give preference to the submitted questions first because we get the research and make sure we give you the right answer. I do answer questions live, but, you know, people like submitting them ahead of time, too. And also, if you'd like to support this platform, now this platform is free and it will always be free but you can become a Patreon member or you can make donations through PayPal. As I mentioned, our industry is aging and it needs changed. Luckily, it's responding to that, whether you're talking about low voltage nation or the Bixie membership program or their efforts to attract women to our industry. It's giving us a fresh view of our industry and make no mistake, it's gonna make this industry even better. One of those people, Hallie Kane is with American Insultech is with us today and she's got a truly inspiring story and I wanted to share this with you. Hallie, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. Yes. So I first met her at the, the Bixie virtual conference in the low voltage nation chat group thing. And mm-hmm. once I started to hear her stories, like I need to get you on the show. And it took, <laughs> it took a couple of months to get you here, but I finally got you. And not because of you. Because of me. <laughs> it's, it's Chuck's fault. Um, so, Hallie, why don't you go ahead and give us just a brief overview of your work history and, and, and uh, how you got here. All right. Well, as you guys know, I'm on the younger side of things. That's why um, people like you have wanted to reach out and hear, hear my story of things. And basically what happened is um, my uncle, uh, Gavin Fox, over at Annexer, um, Knew some people throughout the industry who worked with America Elson Tech, and there was a job opportunity that opened up. And um, I actually previously lived over in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and it was a I had a big decision to make whether to continue on with college 
and see where sports can take me or take this job opportunity. And I decided that um, college was actually the route to go. And then COVID happened. And I was actually over in Seattle, Washington. So um, that was actually a, a hot spot for one of the first places that it actually started exploding. Um, school was a complete mess. Nobody really knew what to do. And I kind of took that as the sign, you know, let's, let's see where this takes us. So I moved down here about eight or nine months ago, um, started working with America Ilson Tech. Um, previous to hiring me, they knew, I knew absolutely nothing about fiber optics, anything about the industry at all. And I've learned a ton so far. I've learned our products very well. I'm getting the hang of how the industry works and distribution. I mean, it's just been a huge learning process and opportunity. And that's, that's how I've gotten here so far. So, you know, it's, it's funny because that's the story of most people getting into low voltage industry. Mm -hmm. I, I, as a small kid, I don't remember any of my friends saying, when I grow up, I yeah. want to pull cable. <laughs> I don't right. remember that. They always want to be cops or firemen or something else. Mm -hmm. So we all kind of almost fall into it by accident. So your story actually mirrors a lot that I've heard before. And, I'm, and this industry is better because you're, you're, you're part of it. Tell me, what attracted you to the low voltage industry? You, you said it just there. Um, I kind of fell into my lap with um, learning about the low voltage industry, you know, in general. When I came into it, I was like, all right, what do you? what's the difference between high voltage and low voltage? I really didn't know. I didn't know that I was specifically going into um, the low voltage industry. So as you said, kind of, kind of just happened to plan out that way. So. Right. So I, I know this one, this question is actually an unscripted one, but I, I'll ask you for it and then I'll give you a little bit of background. Then that gives you kind of a minute to think about it. Okay. What do you, what do you find is your favorite part of this industry? Now, my favorite part um, is as a technician, you know, you were always on a different job. So if you didn't particularly like your, you know, the environment you were working in, just wait a week, you were done that job, mm -hmm. you, were in, you were in another job in another building in another part of town, maybe another city. So you're always getting to see new and fresh things. That was always my mm -hmm. favorite thing, this industry. Yeah. What is your favorite thing about the low voltage industry? Um, I really would have to say finding a customer who needs my help and doing what I need to do to get um, what they need to them. As, as you know, I'm still really new. So a ton of folks and customers and things flow in quite yet. So it, I just feel really accomplished when I can help, help someone help me. We, uh, it's kind of a duality with it. So I just, I still get excited when things work out as they're supposed to. So I think you actually have probably a, uh, an advantage over other salespeople and that advantage is you're new. And mm -hmm. you probably wonder why, why is that? Why is that an advantage? Because a lot of times, and I can say this because I've I've had almost every position within the industry, you know, from a technician to estimator to project manager, and I can't tell you how many times I would have a salesperson come into my office and then tell me something that I just blatantly knew that, that was technically not right. And then mm -hmm. we could argue why, you know, it could be they were taught wrong, they were they were had somebody mentored them wrong, or whatever. You're coming in fresh. You, you don't have any of that that extra luggage or that bad luggage from having somebody else who might have taught you wrong. So you actually have an advantage over that. And the best, the best position I would think if I could offer just one piece of advice is mm -hmm. don't try to be the know all end all answer everything for a customer. I, I, as an instructor, I'm giving an example because I teach classes a lot of times and I'm standing up in front of groups of 20 and 30 people, 75, 80, 85 times a year. And they mm -hmm. find out that I'm a Bixie technician and RCDD and a former Bixie trainer. And they get all impressed with that. And I keep telling them, look, all that means is I know how to read a book and pass a test. That's all that <laughs> means. There's things in this industry that I'm telling you that I don't know. A lot of things. So mm -hmm. I love questions. If I don't know the answer to that question, I will get you that. I'll get you the answer for you. I might have to research or whatever. So that, that's the best way to be with, with, yeah. with people in general. And I think, you know, it sounds to me like you already, already have that, that attitude going now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do make sure to tell... Um, kind of inform my customers that I've been working with so far that with how new I am into the industry. Uh, my manager helps me out with some of the basic trainings and things like that starting out. And um, yeah, I definitely 
I'm upfront about that because um, I know there's a ton of things that I can learn from that if I let my customers know beforehand. I've actually been walked through some data site centers and things like that um, being upfront. So it's been it's another learning curve um, when I when I give that information out. So I make sure to do that. So gotcha. So since you're so new to this industry, what mm -hmm. challenge do you find as somebody coming brand new in this industry? Uh, not knowing anything and don't say acronyms because we all have acronyms right because it's like one of a whole new language <laughs> right that is for sure <laughs> which is why i do the acronym challenge every morning on linkedin so you, you yeah know, I, do... I, I have seen that i've checked it out <laughs> yeah so what do you find is a challenge being a new person in our industry one thing anybody can really relate to coming into a sales position is learning from the cold calling process um, I think everybody has to get comfortable with how they're going to, you know, pitch their own pitch and how they're going to be different from, you know, the individual who's training you. Um, I think that that has, you know, helped me be more personable and get my point across the way, you know, kind of straight to the point, not being too pushy, not being too relaxed. Um, it is a fine line. And I, um, definitely enjoyed learning the best way to do that but it, it's been a struggle but i definitely I, things are going well so right. so we have a lot of people who listen to this podcast who are technicians or project managers or or uh, apprentices and they may not know what cold calling is i know what it is mm -hmm. um, can you just give give us a, a quick you know 30 seconds what is a what's cold calling yeah, so with my position, um, I'm the sales representative for the state of Florida. So what I do, I search up on Google my low voltage contractors and every every area, every main area, I pick my big areas that I want to um, highlight. And what I do is I go on their website, I check out what they have, I see if they have a low voltage division, um, see if I can find an ind individual that I can ask to speak to. Um, so, you know, I'm not floundering around trying to, you know, find the right person or, you know, they don't know what, what's low voltage. Sometimes I get that from people. They don't even realize that they have right. a low voltage industry with it or low voltage division within their company. So once I do that, uh, I cold call is you don't know anybody there. It's not a warmer introduction. You're just calling somebody. They have no clue what America Ilson Tech is about, any of our products or splicers. And I call them and try to um, try to get in to see them and show them uh, the product. So that's what a cold call looks like for me. Gotcha. So the um, so for the people who don't have never done cold calling, and I only did it for mm -hmm. a brief period in my, in my career, for every 10 call, and you let me know if I'm wrong, for every 10 calls that you make, you might actually get through to the right person on one of those calls. Yep, that and, is very and, true. <laughs> and and ten percent of those, do you actually get the opportunity to go visit that person? And ten percent of those people that you visit, you might actually get the an opportunity to bid, and then ten percent of that, you might actually win the bid. So you have to you have to be real comfortable with the word no and rejection when you do cold mm -hmm. calls. For sure. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So what don't you like about our industry? Really have to go with the diversity. Um, there's not much of it. There's not a lot of female, um, females in the industry and there aren't a lot of, uh, diversity ethnically wise either. So, um, that's something I'd like to see change and I hope to be a uh, part of that change. And I think, I think it's going well so far. I, you know, I, I think you're absolutely right. And like I said, I've been in this industry for a long, long, long time. And it's gotten better over the four decades I've been in this industry. And I think, mm -hmm. and when you when you talk to the, and I think I think we're better diversity at the field level. We're not as good as diversity at the decision making level. Yeah, and, and that's that's generally probably who you're talking with. You're probably talking to the company owners, the project managers, the estimators, mm -hmm. and, stuff. We're, and you're absolutely right. We are not good there. We are not. We're yeah. just, we need we do need to get better. And that's why. You know, you know, people like you and, and Blake from Low Voltage Nation, they're, you guys are a breath of fresh air um, mm -hmm. and we need it. Because I was, as a matter of fact, the last live Bixie conference I went to, I was, I was in one of the committee meetings and I was just kind of sitting around. I was like, man, there's just a bunch of old white dudes in here. What's <laughs> right? going to happen? <laughs> we're all probably retiring uh, like next month. Yeah. <laughs> What's the industry going to do when we're gone? 
at my first sales meeting with uh with my team i'm like wow i really am spicing things up <laughs> joining yep. joining the team yep. but um everybody's been pretty accepting so far there's the there are the men out there who are not really looking for a splicer that i've also ran into right. which is unfortunate it's another part of the industry you know comes with the lack of diversity um which is a bummer that i've noticed but i do think things are you know changing and on the right track to seeing more diversity and see what that brings to the table yep and i think i think as you get better and and as you start getting what what we call street credit you know mm-hmm. when, you, when you start talking to people and they realize hey this is not just a salesperson she actually is, you know she actually knows what she's talking about i think you're going to go a long way in helping that i really do yeah so, i'm so, excited for that yeah so our industry is like i kind of mentioned earlier it's there's a lot to it. I mean, it's, you know, if you tell somebody, if you're in the low voltage industry, you know, you get that blank stare back at you. Or if you tell people, you know, you do <laughs> cabling, true. you know, you get that blank stare back at you. It's, I, I, the parable I like to use is, it's like telling somebody you're in the automotive industry, right? Mm-hmm. Well, do you design cars or do you paint yeah. them? Or are you the mechanic? Are you the guy that pumps gasoline into it at the gas station? Because the, all those people work in the automotive mm-hmm. industry. And, and the cabling industry is like that as well. So there's a lot of, a lot of stuff to us. Um, how do you keep current uh, in our ever-changing industry? So one thing that I've really taken advantage of is what social media can offer me learning-wise. I mean, you see it with Low Voltage Nation over with Blake Ermos and everything that he's doing. There's a ton, a ton of like resources that you can get from social media nowadays, YouTube, mm-hmm. LinkedIn, Instagram, even TikTok, as I mentioned on uh, Blake's podcast that I did with him, you can really blow up on these social media platforms and it can do amazing things for your company. But it's also a huge tool that I use as a resource to to learn. And actually, um, in this next upcoming weeks, I'm actually going to be talking to contractor that we previously sold to and kind of learn more about what they do because there's so many different parts and pieces that are you know moving that all have to do with the low voltage industry so i'm excited to keep learning and that's that's another advantage that you and blake have over people like like me um i'm old school Uh, i do social media uh Mm -hmm. as you you, you mentioned my my linkedin my my podcast and youtube and and those are really just natural extensions from me being into photography and videography but there's a lot of people my age that just don't do social media. And I, and, and I, I do a lot of it. And then sometimes I struggle with it. And you just kind of mentioned TikTok. And I've been, I've been tinkering around with the idea of, of going ahead and adding TikTok to my social media plat- platform stuff. But I'm mm-hmm. already doing so much stuff. <laughs> right. It's like, how many platforms could do you need to put out all your information on? It's like, you kind of got to think about which ones to drop and if it's worth it or if it's worth to start a new one or you already have a solid you know base of followers on Facebook or anything so it's kind of kind of pick and choose but um, you never know what can happen on any of them so so uh, have you taken any classes or or any kind of um, watched any kind of webinars to learn more about our industry um, so actually, I just had a meeting last week with an individual at Bixie, and we're going to be possibly into in, in um our products in, in some sort of training uh, type of situation. And, um, you know, nothing set in stone or anything, but it's a conversation that um, has started. So I'm excited to see where that takes me and to see what training that, um, within Bixie that I can learn from as well. Well, you know, there's lots, there's tons of free stuff out there too. Um, just to kind of give, and this is not just for you. This is for everybody who might, might be listening. Um, look up cable installation and maintenance magazine. It's a free subscription magazine that they'll, they'll send you a PDF or even a traditional regular magazine. If you're an old school person, like I am, um, they do also do, if I remember right, two webcasts every month that you can watch for free. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, it's a great way to stay current. And you mentioned already, there's a lot of great YouTube channels out there, um, mm-hmm. that the people putting out content now and Blake's obviously one of those. It's like, there's a lot of, lots of things you can do. Cause in our industry, if you don't, if you're not a constant learner, 
you're going to get left behind. You're going to fall behind. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So what additional challenges do you feel that you have to deal with as being a woman in our industry that, that I wouldn't have to deal with being a man? Um, like I mentioned earlier, I've actually had uh, a few leads that were individuals that just wanted to meet me. And then when, you know, I'm still in the training process and I mention my manager's coming along to do a training, they kind of drop off the face of the earth. Um, maybe that's happened to you as well. I'm not sure, but um, that that's happened a, a few times. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I think just another thing with COVID coming down here and starting, um, it's hard enough starting out in a sales position when you don't know anything about anything. Um, COVID kind of restricted things for me, you know, coming into the industry, my manager not being able to just introduce me to all his contacts you know, that he already right. has in person. And I think in-person meetings just go, um, you know, Good. They go over well and they, you know, lead to more opportunities uh, sales wise. So that's one thing I think uh, uh, held me back a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I mean, everybody's been going through it with every all the restrictions with COVID as well. So. Yeah. So the um, which do you prefer as far as what you, what you do for your line of work? Do you prefer face-to-face -face meetings or the whole Zoom conference call thing? I really, really like just being in person with people. I think pers being more personable, seeing, being able to read somebody's body language if they're really interested or they don't really need it right now. Um, it's just goes over better, you know, if they need it right now, if yeah. they, if it's, oh, maybe down the line later this year or right now, right now. So right. Um, it's just easier to read uh, somebody's energy, I guess, whether they are in need, in dire need or not. And you're absolutely spot on because a lot of people think that humans only communicate via, you know, the words that come to their mouth. That's wrong. It's mm -hmm. the words, it's the inflections, it's the body language. Yeah. And the words that you choose, and this is actually a stat that I, something I learned in a Bixie class many, many years ago. The mm -hmm. words that you use represent literally like 30% of the actual messages being mm -hmm. brought to you. And as an instructor, same thing. When I'm sitting there teaching a class, I'm, I'm making eye contact with everybody and I'm, I'm paying to their body language. I mean, if they're sitting like this, mm -hmm. <laughs> they're shut off. They're not listening to what I'm saying. Yeah. And, and then that's, and it's probably the same with you. If you're sitting in front of a customer and you're, they've got that same kind of, you know, closed off body language, you, you, can, you can easily see that and then change tactics you know, or come from, you know, or just you do that thing. So um, let me ask you this. Would you recommend this industry for other women? I definitely would. I think the only way um, to change things is to have more women and have more um, perspectives that aren't already in the industry right now. And the thing that the industry is lacking is there's not a ton of women in the industry, um, or neither diversity. So I just think starting out young, uh, my age, and oh, I mean, I'm 19, so I'm on the younger side of the young scale of things, but um, people in their 20s and 30s even, I think I have one, one other salesperson on my team who's in their 30s. So um, I think that the next step is having people, you know, kind of flood the industry before all of these contacts and people who have been in the industry for 20, 40 years, yep. um, learning everything that you can from the people who've done it for so long um, before people start retiring and that knowledge is lost. I think that's really important. It is absolutely important. And that's, that's, that's one of the reasons why we do what we do is to get that out there. And, and if God forbid something should happen, like, you know, and I get hit by a car on my motorcycle, you know, whatever, my, mm -hmm. that, that, that stuff's still on YouTube. It's there. It's, you mm -hmm. know, and it's out there so people can just pick it up and, and run with it and stuff. So, yeah. So what's new with American Institute? What What new stuff do they have coming out? The only thing that I like bragging about is the all-in-one aspect of our splicers. I think um, America Ilson Tech is still getting established with our name getting out there. At first, it's a little unbelievable how easy it is to use our splicer. We have the thermal stripper, a cleaver, and a cleaning station on our splicers itself. And using it, you know, there's no more stripping of the fiber. You're not breaking, I mean, 
if you have a large job doing a ton of splices, this splicer can really, really change um, the time frame of getting work done. And I think that's just, like I said, being in person, seeing it, being hands-on, being able to use it, it's like kind of seems out of the out of the world a little bit when I just send you a video and we're not speaking face to face. It's like, okay, but how much is it? Or, you know, and then things get put pause, put on pause from there. So I just think um, all I have to say is be open to come in and let me do demonstrations for people. That's all I gotta say. And I think it was one of the things that you guys did at the Bixit conference that just literally hit the ball out of the ballpark. Cause I spent a lot mm -hmm. of time in the, uh, in, our, in our chat room for my full-time job. And then also in, in Blake's uh, thing as well. And, and you guys were doing uh, Hey, come join us. And you had a zoom link that you put in the channel and you pop out mm -hmm. and you show people how to, how to actually do that. I was like, that was so cool. I went back to my company and said, we need to do this. Yeah. So I'm yeah. stealing it from you. I'm stealing the idea from you guys. <laughs> right. Yeah. And with, especially with everything, you know, being virtual for Bixie, it was like, how can we get things as close to, um, as close as it would be to actually being in person. And so I threw, threw the idea out there and it stuck. Not a, not a whole lot of people, um, you know, were able to jump on there. It was kind of a last minute decision, but I mean, you got to see it. A few others got to see it. So it was, it was awesome. And that's what, that's a perfect example why I said why we need fresh blood in this industry, because a lot of us old guys, and I'm not going to say who did this, but I, I proposed to somebody recently that we start a YouTube channel and we document some of our contractors. And I, I basically was told, why would somebody watch that? Mm -hmm. Really? That, talk about being short sighted, right? right? <laughs> and, and that's like, you know what? Fine. If you're not going to do it, I'm going to do it. And hence, Let's Talk Cabling Podcast got born out of that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and and then, see, that's what I say. Your first thought, your first inclination was to go that route. Mm -hmm. And now you're, you're, leading, you're leading the trend because, you know, everybody else is following you. Everybody's, like I said, I saw that and I was like, we need to do that. We need yeah. To do that. It's something you, you don't really think uh, you need to do it until you see other people doing it and seeing how it works out for them. Right. And then, you know, you're hopping on the trend a little late and everybody's doing it. So yep. it's nice to, so when new things do come arise. It's not a bad idea to hop on it and see, yep. see how things uh, play out. So where can people find you? I guess look you up on LinkedIn or how do they get in yep. contact with you? I'm, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I have my own page, but we also have the America Ilsa Tech LinkedIn page. And we also have our Instagram account, which uh, Brad Everett and I, we, we uh, teamed up to start our Instagram and it's been going well. Um, that's also just America Ilsa Tech. And it's not American and it's not uh, I don't know, people flub up Ilsen Tech as well. It's America Ilsen Tech on our YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, and um, Instagram. So you can find, I mean, we link almost everything together. You can probably find anything, anything you need on there. Um, I would suggest first going to our YouTube for video referrals and things like that. Um, and then after that, Facebook and our Instagram, as well as our website, um, you can check out all the accessories and tools that go along with our all-in-one splicers and our standalone splicers. But um, that's where you can find all of our stuff. So very cool. I foresee uh, of uh, us do, uh, getting together with you guys and doing a video on this to follow up with that because I remember when I watched the the video that you guys did at the virtual conference, I was like. I need to get that out to people because I remember mm -hmm. you know, it, it's so easy the way that you guys have it all set up and, and you can just rock and roll right through that. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's a hot button for project managers, estimators, and technicians. Estimators yeah. want it quick and cheap. Project managers want it quick and done right. And installers out in the field just want to know how to be able to do it and do it right the first time not have to go back and redo it. Yeah. And so that's actually something that our sales rep out of, uh, Washington, he has a whole setup. He did it uh, with throughout COVID, um, doing demos and things like that in person was not a thing. So he has his whole setup and he was the one who was running um, that through our Bixie Live. So 
um, I'll have to talk to him and see see if he can get something set up with you. And absolutely. That, so absolutely. Well, it was a pleasure having you on. Any last parting bits of wisdom that you want to put out there to the whole internet crowd? Um, just check out those videos. I think the videos speak for themselves. And, you know, I'd love to set up demonstrations for anybody here in the state of Florida. And um, throughout our uh, website, you can find your sales rep for anybody in the States at americaelsontech.com. And I just want to thank you for having me on here and uh, letting me spill, spill my beans about everything with America Elson Tech and my journey. So. This is not going to be the first time. We're going to check back in with you a little while and see how you're progressing. All right. Sounds like a plan. Thanks so much. Thank you, Hallie. Take care.